What's going on guys? It's Kyle. Welcome to the Stock Goat YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to be covering the overall market and some big headlines around the SoFi stock. As you can see in the thumbnail today, the CEO Anthony Noto is buying up shares. That is a bullish sign, especially in a nasty environment like this. They just reported earnings. So it looks like, you know, Anthony Noto likes where the company is headed in the very near future with excellent guidance put out on the earnings report. So a lot of people are in fear right now in this environment and selling for a loss or just selling out, exiting the market. We need to make people confident and, you know, help spread the good news. So be sure to click the link in my comment section. That is going to be my Twitter. And we're going to go over to one of my specific tweets. And guys, be sure to retweet this tweet to just help give people more confidence in this market if they're investing in, you know, SoFi. CEO is loading now. Like I said, SoFi is killing it. This management team is for real. Take advantage of the fear. Retweet this. This is what you want to see. Anthony Noto bought $149,000 of shares, 15,000 shares total at about 996, increasing direct ownership about a half a percent to 2.9 million shares. So worth around $30 million, but this is extremely good news. Be sure to retweet this specific tweet to just get it out to the public, get it out to as many retail investors as we possibly can because we want to spread the good news. All right, guys, and we can see the overall market got hammered. Every single index was down. The NASDAQ got hit the hardest. I mean, the NASDAQ goes down about 2% per day. I'm getting really used to it. I mean, it's almost as you know normal as going to the bathroom now, seeing the NASDAQ down 2%. You can see here, Upstart was also down 14.5% today, so we were not the only one getting hammered. We also have a firm down 8%. We also have Block down 6.5% and then SoFi down about 6.5%. So we actually got hit not the hardest, okay? Other fintechs got absolutely hammered, okay? So we are not just getting singled out in this market. It is just the overall market right now with these bad headlines once again. And you can see the bad headline that you know really put the fear in the market today was the Russian seizure of Ukraine's largest nuclear power plant. What does it mean? Scroll down a little bit. The Russian attack on Europe's largest power plant sparked a global panic on Friday as nuclear officials warned it could have caused a devastating radiation leak and left millions of Ukrainians without an energy supply. Okay, boom. We don't want to keep reading this, spreading the fear. Okay, this is going to blow over in probably a couple of days. So these are the headlines that just continue to make the news, okay? War, inflation, COVID, nuclear weapons, nuclear power plants. Guys, it's just not going to stop until it stops, okay? It's not going to stop, but there's going to be a period of time where one to three months we go in a little nice bull run and recover some of these losses, and then there's going to be another negative headline. So get used to this. These are the buying opportunities. They are taking full advantage. When they see something like this in the media, they're going to run with it. It's going to be something different every week. Maybe not as bad, but just understand the media controls the market, and that is where the fear comes in, and that's why you're seeing the aggressive selling today. All right, we got to address the headline. I've been getting this comment from you guys on Twitter, so we're going to address it really quickly. Biden administration considering extending freeze on student loan payments. Click another one. Claim White House may extend freeze on student loans. We got to read this, guys. This is extremely funny. Joe Biden right now is the only president in history where no one's paid on their student loans for the entirety of his presidency, Biden's top aide said. So another record for Biden, you know, no payments for, you know, the past, you know, two years. OK, this extension may go on for three years. It is a possibility. I understand there is a pandemic, but guys, we are literally out of the pandemic. Mass mandates are getting removed. Everyone's got their vaccine shots. We need to move on and it is time to pay when money's borrowed because, you know, this is going to teach, you know, young people that have taken out these student loans. It's going to teach, you know, discipline. It's going to teach responsibility. I paid my student loans and I think everyone that takes out a loan should pay it back. OK, imagine if there was a payment pause on, you know, your mortgage or your car or, you know, your credit card. OK. We just need to get a move on and understand that the pandemic is coming to an end once again, and it's time to pay back any type of loan, including student loans. And guys, we might be looking a little bullish. Take a look. You can see here, SoFi pointed down to Anthony Noto, Chief of Staff, Ronald Klain shared on a podcast, Save America, that clarity is coming for student loan borrowers. Great. Now let's get it done once and for all. And if we scroll down, we can get the full details. I mean, this actually had, you know... 2,000 likes on Anthony Noto, uh, 200 retweets. So that's pretty impressive. The original intent of the moratorium was great. It delivered, but as the economy rises, it has cost taxpayers $150 billion. Another extension could cost $60 billion more. Enough giving relief to wealthy grads distressed and defaulted borrowers need a permanent solution now. 
And you can see here he's talking to Joe Biden, should show leadership and make good on his word to forgive 10,000K in student loan debt for people struggling to make ends meet and bring affluent borrowers back to repayment on May 1st. No waffling based on political wins. Do the right thing. And just continues to go down about how the SoFi is trying to help you know students that you know have taken out money by refinancing and making it cheaper. So as you can see, uh, Anthony Noto is potentially liking what he saw in that podcast from that uh, gentleman. Uh, what is his name exactly? It says uh, Ronald Klain. So so maybe go look at that podcast and see exactly what it says. But maybe they're just going to go with the ten thousand uh, in relief and maybe start the payments back up. We're going to have to see. But you know this is what is going on right now, and we can see Anthony Noto is buying up shares once again. And we'll take a look at more details on what the student loans revenue that SoFi is getting. You know if they start up and you know how much it could cost them if it gets pushed out. But just take a look at members, guys. 523,000 quarter over quarter to 3.5 million members. Remember, they were trying to hit 3 million and they got you know up to 3.5 million. So they're absolutely killing it right now. Products increase 906,000 quarter over quarter to 5.2 million, 100% year over year. Products are getting ridiculous. Galileo accounts exceeded 100 million. It's actually accelerating faster from the previous quarters to 10 million uh, quarter over quarter. So we are on fire right now. We can see lending products are up 18% year over year. Financials are up 155% a year over year for products. So SoFi is absolutely killing it. Quarterly uh, performance is a record 280. It wasn't a blowout, but of course we have a couple of headwinds with student loans, etc. Just at EBITDA 5 million, still in the positive for six consecutive quarters. Annual performance over a billion dollars, just like they projected, 30 million total in EBITDA. Now, guys, slide 13 is the one you really want to look at. This one is extremely important. Okay, it gives you the Q1 2022 guidance. The Q1 2022 guidance incorporates the negative impact of the unexpected extension of the federal student loan payment moratorium to May 2022. So they're talking about Q1, January, February, and March, the hit we're going to take from this extension. We estimate that the negative impact to be approximately 30 to 35 million of revenue and 20 to 25 million of contribution profit, you know, basically like EBITDA. So, okay, so we got the details. So 35 million times four is about 140 million in revenue. Okay, so that is for the full year, all four quarters, okay? 1.56 billion in revenue guidance, that's 10% of revenue, $140 million hit. Student loan pause is about 10% of SoFi's revenue, okay? So it's not gonna destroy the company, okay? It's about 10% of revenue. It's not gonna make our market cap, you know, slice in half, you know, once the news gets broken. I mean, we already, you know, just dropped 30%. So I think the news is already priced in. As soon as we see those headlines, the stock starts selling off. So the headlines are out now. And I'm telling you right now, it's 10% of total revenue for this extension. These are, you know, federal loans. So you can see SoFi is doing extremely well. Okay, revenue is going higher in Q1. It's not necessarily a blowout because we don't have that 35 million in student loans. But take a look, if they can get these student loans back, the company is gonna start exploding. 310 to 320 million in revenue projection we could have had, 43 to 48% growth, 20 to 30 million in EBITDA. Guys, they just did 30 million in EBITDA for the full year 2021. Now they're expecting to do 30 million in the first quarter and the bank charter license is starting up in Q2, guys. That's why we get into the big jump in EBITDA, 600% they're seeing. And you can see the guidance is absolutely incredible for this year, 1.57 billion in revenue. That's 55% growth. EBITDA right here, jumping from 30 million to 80 million. That is 600% gain. And we have, you know, of course, stock based compensation. It was about 240 last year. It's jumping to 340. So, guys, to get 55% in growth for your company, you're going to have to pay for the talent. You're going to have to work these employees extremely hard. That's a $100 million jump, but they're expecting about a $600 million jump in revenue, okay? So, it just looks like, you know, we are in an extreme growth phase. We have to pay for the talent. There's other new IPOs out there paying, you know, doubled and tripled compensation from what we're paying. I look, I forgot the exact companies, but just take a look at some of these other uh, big IPOs that came out. We need to pay for the talent. So it looks like management feels comfortable with the 340 million to you know sustain this type of growth year over year. That's what we're gonna have to do until we become a profitable company, okay? Once the EBITDA starts exploding, we're gonna become net income positive year over year, and we're gonna be able to start doing a lot more things with the cash, uh, buying back shares, you know, five years from now. 
potentially offering dividends five to eight years from now. You just have to wait and be patient. The stock-based compensation is to pay for the talent. And you can see the growth that they're projecting is absolutely insane for next year. And guys, another reason why we're absolutely getting hammered, okay, once the earnings were coming out, okay, I believe the call open interest this week was about 50000 It almost quadrupled to 176000 And we know for sure every single one of these calls expired worthless today so 176,000 calls you know they burnt these up most likely we could have a little bit of bounce uh, next week because you know the call open interest is low we don't really have any catalyst and you know these puts you know they'll probably fry the puts so right now just going you know back and forth but definitely the calls got fried because of earnings and you know a lot of you know retail was trying to take advantage of a get rich quick on the earnings so so once again open interest is extremely high and it looks like it jumps again for march 18th and if you made it to the end of the video, I want to say I really do appreciate it. I enjoyed doing this video for you. If you felt any of this information was useful, be sure to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to drop a comment. We're going to be keeping you updated daily. And as we can see in this video, the CEO, Anthony Noto, once again, be sure to click the link in my uh, comment section and retweet that tweet. He is buying up shares very aggressively. $150,000 is not a little buy. That's a 15,000 share buy, bringing his total to about you know 3 million shares. So CEO's buying, very confident in the guidance and future of SoFi. That's exactly what I want to see. A lot of these other you know companies out there are not buying shares right now for their management teams. A lot of them are actually selling. So great news. And once again, we're most likely getting clarity on student loans very, very soon. Anthony Noto potentially liked what he was seeing. That could be another reason why he was buying today. Maybe they're going to go the route of just giving out the $10,000 forgiveness and starting back, you know, the overall loans uh, repayments and getting it going. Once again, my name is Kyle. Hope you have a great day.